First of all, I would just like to say a quick prayer. I always like to do that. Thank you. Lord Jesus, I just praise you and I thank you. Father, thank you so much for life. Thank you for your testimony, Father, that you have given me to be able to give out to the others. For your glory, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Psalms 118.24. I always like to start off with the scripture. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I am rejoicing for another day of life. The morning that I was going to find out about the outcome of the biopsy of my breast, the Lord revealed himself to me in a different way. I was walking toward my classroom around 6.30 in the morning, praising his name. Then all of a sudden, I started smelling a beautiful fragrance that was following me. And I knew that I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I felt peace and comfort. It was very overwhelming for me. Later that morning, I received the phone call at work and heard the word aggressive stage cancer stage one. Months before my cancer journey, I was asking God to trim my branches so I could bear good fruits and to be used to give him the glory. I wanted to grow deeper in his word and have his perfect will for my life. God's plans, and I want you to hear this, God's plans are always better. He knew that I had a hard time witnessing to strangers. Oh, I prayed for people that I knew, family and close friends. But when it came to talk to the unsaved strangers out there, I couldn't come up with a conversation with them. There was no boldness in me. Now I don't have any problems opening my mouth <laughs> and sharing the gospel about his precious, precious blood that has healed me. The chemo and the radiation and the other tests were hard on my body. But I knew the Lord was with me through this journey. He's taken me in places that I didn't think I would ever could get through. The definition that I want you guys to hear is about empathy. Empathy is identifying oneself with another person's feelings, experiences, and emotions, particularly in regards to misfortune, compassion, sympathy and understanding we should put ourselves in the place of others and consider how we would feel if positions were reversed it will be seven years ago this march i was diagnosed of the cancer i was surrounded by my family and by my church the church prayed for me and sent me cards and called to check on me what stands out mostly during this journey first of all was a very loving husband and family my husband went through a lot. Matter of fact, he even had to shave my hair, which was very hard for him. He held it in, but as soon as it was done, he dismissed himself and had to leave the house. It was tough. The second what I learned is what we've all been learning this last week of the 30-day challenge, authentic community. What Pastor Brian has preached in Acts 2, 42 through 47, doing life together. I had a group of godly women who were there as extra hands of Jesus. If my husband couldn't get me to chemo, then one of the girls would drop me off, another one would pick me up. They would take me to Bible studies, they would send me flowers, cards, massage my bald head, which we would have great laughs about. And if, we weren't, if it weren't for these godly women who were there to pray and encourage me, to give me scriptures, to send me praise music, drop off dinners for my family, to feel my pain, to listen to me when I wanted to complain. I don't know if I'd be able to get it through. I, I probably would have got definitely with the Lord's help, but mentally they were there to encourage me. I was also very relieved that their husbands were there for my husbands and sons. They called and checked on them and made them laugh. I also want you to know that these godly women spoke truth to me through the word. If I needed correction or they saw something in me that would need to be stretched for his, for his kingdom, they were there to encourage me and love me. I want to share a quick little story so you'll understand about going in the depth with the Lord. It's about a man who went out to sea with a group of people. 
and when they got to their destination, he started, it started to rain. The man thought for sure the trip would be canceled due to the activity of the storm. The captain said, everyone get your scuba equipment on, we're going to jump in. The man said, what about the storm? And the captain said, don't worry about it and just jump. As the man went deeper into the ocean, he noticed how peaceful everything was. Up above him was a storm that was raging, but below, it was peaceful. Whatever storm you are going through right now, you must go deeper with our Lord. That is where you will have his peace. Trust in him is what I've learned going through the journey that I went through. Stay in his word. Fellowship with the believers. Remember, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Share love, share prayers. I've also learned to walk by faith and not by sight when these storms come. I know God is in control when all chaos is around me. Jesus is still in me now. Is he rejoicing as I'm going through these storms and looking at him and praising him and reading his word and, and speaking it out? He knows what I need to get closer to him. He's cutting off those branches that are dead, and he's pruning them so that branches will bear bigger fruits for his glory. I've also learned it's not about me. It's not about really what I went through. It's about the steps that I went through to glorify his holy name, to sing his praises, to sing about who he is, to show the empathy to other people. I know that I'm healed through his blood. I know where I am going, and that right there, when I was going through the journey, was keeping me focused. If it's my time, Lord, I'm going to be with you and see you face to face. That right there released me from fears, and trusting him has given me peace. I always like to close with a couple scriptures that's really blessed me. And I think this would be great for our church, especially what we've been studying about. In Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Remember the word empathy. That's what we're supposed to be with each and every one of us. If someone's going through a pain, a struggle, we aren't going to look at the sin we're going to feel their pain, and we're going to love them. We're going to reach out to them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to speak the truth. But we're going to feel their pain because they're in turmoil, whatever they're going through. The scripture that has helped me through my cancer journey is in Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. He is holding at this moment my right hand for his glory. Thank you so much.